Now you can purchase this particular drum online for anywhere between 40 or 35 American dollars all the way up to about a hundred dollars American US dollars but this particular drum is actually priceless and I'm gonna tell you why Hey, what's happening everyone? William Johnson here. I thought I'd f uh, finish. I thought I would follow up with this instrument stories. I'm having uh, fun conceptualizing and thinking about other videos to do. But in the thought of doing these instrument stories, which thank you for those of you who actually said, hey, I I'd like to hear more. Um, I thought about, you know, I've never really talked about or done anything uh, on my YouTube channel, at least to my memory maybe perhaps I have but I don't think I have with my very first drum or at least the first drum that I purchased with my money as an adult right and this particular drum spoiler well not spoiler but truth be told it's not actually priceless but it is priceless to me this is the first drum I've ever bought and I bought this drum when I was about 19 years old no maybe 18 about 18 or 19, somewhere around that. It's been been a long time now, well over 20 years that I bought this drum. And I actually purchased it on the southern uh, coast of Spain. And I believe it is a Moroccan style handmade darabuka. And I know it's a darabuka, but I, it, I'm pretty sure it's a made in Morocco. But I bought it on the southern coast of Spain. I looked online and the closest I could see to this style of drum, there's no flange. It's not a very expensive drum, but this style, uh, they come up from, uh, there's a couple just like it that are actually Moroccan. And there's also some in Tunisia that popped up, which is very interesting because I had another one just like this that was, uh, I, per I had purchased in Tunisia. But this one I purchased when I was in Spain. So it's not a very expensive one at all. Um, you, if you want to tune it, tune it up, you know, it is a clay with real skin. Uh, if you want to tune it, then you have to use a heat gun and heat up the surface, old school, right? And it actually does have a great sound. It's not what many would consider a high quality professional sound, but it does sound really good. And if you've got skills playing a darabuka, then you can produce some really nice sounds out of this, this particular drum. Uh, as you can see, it's been through some trials and tribulations, like many of us, but it is still very much functional. And I just, it, to me, it's very special that I still have the first drum, to my knowledge, that I have purchased uh, here in my studio out of all of my instruments. Now this particular drum, when I purchased it, I was on vacation in Spain. I was in the, in the military, I was in the Air Force, and I, was on, I took a couple of weeks of vacation, of leave, as we used to say, and I took a military hop to uh, Spain to uh, Air Force Base or well, Navy Base actually in Spain and toured around the southern and southern central uh, area of Spain and I had the time of my life that was a long time ago and I purchased this particular drum while I was on that trip now at the time I wasn't playing drums but I was fascinated by percussion particularly West African and Afro-Cuban percussion but while on this trip I was going, we were, uh, myself and another gentleman that I was touring around with, we both met each other in what we call a PAX terminal, kind of like the airport for civilian terms. Uh, we were both doing the same thing. We were by ourselves saying, hey, let's go on, uh, young military guys, let's, let's go on a, uh, a trip together. Let's team up since we're both doing the same thing and, and tour around Spain. So that's what we did. Now that particular trip that I was on in Spain, man, I was, I was either 18 or 19 years old and I was having the time of my life. I took the two weeks of leave, as we call it, vacation in the military, and I took a military hop into Rota, Spain, which is a naval base there, 
um, and man, oh, it was it was incredible. I left Germany where I was stationed at in a sweater in the middle of when was that? That was probably around the springtime, and I left in a big a jacket and a sweater, and I was pulling off layers and get to Spain. It was incredible. Fl plane flight comes in, and I land in Spain. The door opens, and a gush of sun comes in, and it's, I'm just blinded. And the next thing I see is a silhouette of a beautiful Spanish uh, <laughs> woman who's welcoming us to Spain. And I was just like, oh, this is going to be a really good trip. Hey, I was 19 years old, guys. So, you know, I was just like, man, this is going to be a great trip. And I didn't, I think I spent about... Mm, five, six, or seven days in Spain. I think I slept about an hour a day, if that. Uh, I stayed in, I don't think I stayed in one nice hotel while we were there. Uh, I think we stayed in hostels the whole time. We had a rental car. We rented a car, we went down, we were headed to Marbella, and on the way we saw this really neat looking pottery. Uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a lot like those big, huge pottery outdoor landscape statue places you see in the United States. So we pulled off the side of the road there we, uh, and, and just, we also had to use the restroom, but we were checking out this store. And I saw this drum up on like the top shelf. I had to ask for help to get it down, I asked how much it was. It was very inexpensive, so I went ahead and purchased it. And I wasn't playing drums, but I, that was the beginning of my collecting drums. I actually got another drum just like this shortly after that trip, which I no longer have. I ended up giving it to my cousin, who's about four years older than me, but he passed away in the early 2000s. And I, I missed that drum, but obviously I miss him much more. Uh, but anyhow, this particular drum, I, you know, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about darbukas at the time. I didn't know about any rhythms like baladi or mafuf. You know, I, I didn't play any drums at the time. I was an aspiring singer and I used to rap, but I was a dancer mostly and I did not play the drums. But yeah, this was my first drum. I had another one just like it that had a beautiful design on it. it had a beautiful mosaic design on it and someone bought it for me and it was another drum just like this in Tunisia the one that I gave to my cousin they actually bought it they didn't buy it they traded a can of beans and some American jeans some Levi's for that particular drum it was a military trip that they were on and they thought of me and they were like oh, I'll get that drum but they traded at the time they were in a market and the guy didn't have a whole lot on him but he was like I'll trade you this for that you know so he traded a can of beans I think it was and a pair of jeans a can of beans and a pair of jeans yeah so anyways you know this particular drum is also responsible for my first foray my first dive into Middle East drumming after I started playing years later after I purchased this drum I didn't know anything about Middle Eastern percussion and I wanted to know more about this drum and that's when I discovered the Darabuka and the Dumbek and that's when I started learning different rhythms and that's when I uh, discovered the whole style of Turkish split finger and the difference between Egyptian style playing and Turkish playing and then I started buying more Darabukas and Dumbeks and got into that style of Darabuka playing. I'm not an expert and I, I don't even think that I'm really that good but I've had a love for it and been playing and studying it off and on for the last uh, 15 years but this particular drum is about 25 uh, 23 24 years old um, yeah I bought it before I came back to the States at the time I was stationed overseas went on that trip to Spain I really wish that I had a photo or something when I bought it so anyways yeah this drum has been dropped as you can see it's been cracked up and I put it back together it's just too priceless for me to let it be too much in disrepair and I don't do a whole lot with it every now and then I pick it up and I play it and I'm super connected to it because of its history so anyways that's just a little bit about this particular drum my first drum the first William Johnson drum that I've ever bought so it's priceless in my collection of about, I don't know, 200 some odd instruments. Anyways, thanks guys for hanging out with me as I ramble on uh, with my instrument stories about this particular drum and my, what's responsible for my first foray into Middle Eastern drumming. Anyways, so yeah, anyhow, be on the lookout for some things I got coming down, uh, down the pipe here, coming up on the channel. Thank you all for watching. God bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and I'll see you soon.